As a college teacher who is in deep denial that the semester is about to start, sometimes people ask me how I use my bullet journal to keep track of my teaching, and I actually have quite the system going on, and I'm going to break that down for you. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper, where I talk about bullet journaling, creative planning, teaching, and some creative stuff like brush calligraphy and alcohol ink. Today, I want to break down my teaching system. It is kind of a mix of digital and analog, and I'm going to try to explain the method to my madness. <laughs> so every summer and winter, I will revise or tweak some of the curriculum in order to prep for the next semester. I kind of follow the same steps every time, and so the first thing I will do is start a dedicated project list in my bullet journal, and that will just walk through all the different steps of each phase. These are things like reviewing the evals from last semester, reviewing the comments the teachers had given about the curriculum throughout the semester, content stuff, are we covering the right articles, do we need updated things, how are the points distributed across the semester, and do we need to change any of those, what assignments do we want to, to tweak or ditch, is the flow right? and then walking into things like the really detailed tasks of getting quizzes into the Canvas site and copying over lesson plans. And the, the project list walks through all of those things. But the actual content of all of that work lives in Google Drive. So if you follow me for a while, you know our university uses Google and we love it. So because I write curriculum for myself and other people, this makes the most sense for the task, right? You choose the right tool for the task at hand, and because we want something that's copyable, that is accessible by a lot of people, that can be updated throughout the semester, this sort of makes the most sense. It doesn't help for me to like write that in my own notebook and then send it to other people. So once I have a sense in my mind of the flow of the class, some of the points and stuff like that, then that gets translated into Google Docs like the syllabus, the calendar of assignment deadlines, the, the lesson plans, and so on. To keep all of that accessible, I create a document called Curriculum HQ for headquarters, and that is the one page that everybody goes to to access all of those different documents. So it walks through each week and each day and links to the relevant agendas, resources, assignment descriptions, and so on. But that dashboard serves as the one home to give all of those documents some context. So that's where digital makes sense. As I work on those things, the tasks I write in my everyday bullet journal, and that keeps me attuned to the task that I need to be doing in order to make progress on updating each semester. Throughout the semester, of course, that's when I would write things like grade this assignment, respond to this student, set up a meeting with so-and-so. That all gets put into my everyday bullet journal. Of course, to protect the identity of students, I will always make sure to use some kind of code that anonymizes them in my notebook. And then throughout the semester, a couple different things are happening. In my work bullet journal, there is a dedicated space for changes throughout the semester. So when instructors tell me about a mistake that was made in the canvas, or this was a gap here, or different ideas, I write them down on a running list that I keep in one place so that I can reference it when it comes to the wintertime or in the summertime. Other times they'll also email things to me, whether it's a resource they think that I would like or a reading that I should look at. I keep those things in my email with a specific label so that I can archive it and then come back to it when I'm trying to do the deep work. I label all those things so I can return to it when I am ready to do a deep dive into some of those resources and so it's not breaking up my attention the moment that I get that email. I am also getting a lot of content ideas throughout the semester, and oftentimes I'm on my phone seeing something on an article or a YouTube video or social media, and I want a really quick way to be able to save that link. So I have a note in my Google Keep app, which is basically sticky notes, and this one is called Curriculum, so that when I'm on my phone, I can quick grab the link, jot down like a quick note about what that is, and then add the link to the sticky note, and then immediately it's available on my computer. So so that seamless transition between the two is 
super helpful when it comes to keeping an accessible ongoing list. Knowing that those three systems are running in parallel throughout the semester, I know where to look when it comes time to update the things. So I know to go back to those notes. I know to go back to those labels in my email in order to keep making our curriculum better. So I hope that makes sense and explains my teaching system just a little bit. As I mentioned, it is a huge mix of digital and analog, but I choose the tools based on the task at hand, specifically if I need to share it with other people, if it's for convenience and knowing where some of those things will exist. If it's something that I'm just trying to make sense of for myself, that's where it's easy to put into my bullet journal, work it out physically, and visualize what's going on. If it's something that I need to give to other people or access it or share it, that obviously goes digital so that I can easily send links and make copies. But throughout all of that, the tasks, the actual to-do items live in my everyday bullet journal. How do you keep track of your stuff? How is there a workflow that I don't yet understand and you need to enlighten me? Please let me know in the comments below. If you have questions, of course, ask away. If you like this video, go ahead, like, subscribe, share, comment, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I will see you in my next video. Bye. Sure that it flows at a pace that makes sense. Uh, why, why, why? So I hope that makes sense. Mm.